voice and exalt him. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. You can sing in the spirit, you can sing in your understanding, open your mouth and let the heavens hear your voice, giving the King of Kings praise and glory that is due his name. We want to hear from you, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. We want to see you. We want to hear from you, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Tonight we want to see you. We want to hear from you. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we want to see you, we want to hear from you. Oh, that thou will rend the heavens and come down. That your glory will manifest, that your presence will be felt in this place, that there will be a ring of your presence in this place, upon every life and upon every heart. Sharatabalates, we wanna see you. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reigning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reigning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, pray. Can we have a congregational worship? Sing that song with me. Hallelujah for the Lord. God only. Sing it to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless you, Jesus. There is none like you. Oh, hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Oh, sing hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
you before your holy presence we bless you before the holy angels we join the angels to declare hallelujah to the king of kings to the lamb that was slain be all blessings and honor and glory and power and dominion forever and ever give him glory Give him praise. 
Give him praise. Give him praise. Sharabata Ramata Rikita Barata Deba Sotoromaha. Give him praise. My heart is full of gratitude. I can sing that song. Are you and no one else but you? See, I've seen the wonders of your grace. Jesus, for the giving of me. Oh. Now to you, I can see, I can tell, and I know. Sing it to him. All my days, truly, I will see your way. I can see, I can tell. I can see, I can tell, and I know that it's your grace. All my days, I will see your grace. I want you to clap your hands, lift your voice with a shout of thanksgiving to Jesus. Somebody who's grateful for how far God has brought you. Somebody who's thankful for where you are. I want you to raise your voice. Give him a shout of praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take your beautiful seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for the just concluded Youth Aflame Conference. If you are going to be joyful, make sure you don't pretend about it. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to thank God for all the testimonies mighty things that he did i know that we may not be able to exhaust all that god has done because week after week from the ending of the conference we'll keep experiencing or keep hearing testimonies that as a result of the favor the grace 
the power and the glory of God that we experience and we are grateful that God has been merciful to us for the lavish release of his presence in our midst another thing I'm really thankful to God for is for confirming his word amongst us you hear testimonies of this was said in the service and this happened in my life and I don't want us to take it for granted it's one thing to say something is another thing for it to come to pass that is perhaps the only sign to know that God has spoken and we give God all the glory for what he has done and I tell you tonight that those of you that were not in the conference God will cause a measure of what was released to be brought to you today in Jesus name once again I welcome you to Neumatech it's so good to be back again to Neumatech hallelujah this is a place where we experience the wisdom the presence and the power of god that's why we take time to worship to pray and then we give time to the word of god and the demonstration of his spirit in our midst it's a complete package and tonight you will receive all that god has for you in jesus name i want to say a big thank you to every one of us both those of us that attended uh, the conference and um, especially to our workers and all our leaders we want to say a big thank you for the sacrifice of time resources efforts everything that was put together and pulled together to bring a success to this um, conference and we believe god that next year will be greater in jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. once again it's good to see every one of us everybody is welcome I also want to especially welcome Pastor Dan again. He's here with us. Please give him a big, big God bless you. Thank you for coming, sir. Amen. This morning, God added one more to his family. His wife put to bed. Amen. Stressless delivery. Stressless. Amen. In fact, he told me that they were just in few hours to the labor. And as soon as they arrived at the hospital, she put to bed. And I pray for every mother here. That will be your story. That will be your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. That you will deliver like the Hebrew woman. Without pain, without complication. And your life and the life of your child will be preserved in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Are we ready tonight? Yes. Are there people outside? Okay. Those of you that are outside, you are welcome as well. God bless you in Jesus' name. I want you to know that you are part of this service. And please be generous with the camera to ensure you keep showing them. Did you hear what I said? Camera, I'm talking to you. Uh -huh. Don't just put everything on my face. So that those who are watching them online will know that they are here so once and again make sure you you are generous with them amen, amen. abby yes, sir. Uh -huh. are you set tonight yes, sir. now this service is going to be prophetic because the message tonight is going to speak to our hearts and is going to minister to many people here and i'm so grateful that god is bringing this message at this time especially uh, to us who are in Nigeria here yeah. please reduce that thing I don't want it to shout too much especially to those of us who are in Nigeria here yeah. you know God has a way of always speaking to his people regardless of the territory the city or the nation where they belong there is a universal word that God can give to his body but then there are times when God will give a message that applies to a particular territory and i believe that this message is meant for everybody streaming across the world and for, um, and here present but i think by the grace of god that um, it will really apply to those of us who are here in nigeria and i pray that this world will bring comfort and hope as well as direction in our lives and in our destinies as we follow the lord and uh we fulfill his divine purpose on earth in Jesus name 
and then after the message or prayer and if the Holy Spirit permits me we're going to have a little moment for the prophetic um, allow the Holy Spirit just in case there are people who wants to minister and I have a word actually that God laid on my heart for um, Africa that I would like to share so I'm trying my best to see how we can round up and then we'll have a little prophetic moment before we close are you ready for that okay and by the way while we we're worshiping the Lord told me that there is somebody here I don't know what you lost but God said it's been restored there's an anointing to restore losses and we declare that in the name of Jesus Christ everything that was lost is being restored everything that has been stolen by the enemy or by human agents God is causing you to recover it in this service for some of you it will be a 24 hour recovery and restoration in the name of Jesus Christ do you believe that shout a big amen, amen. God is restoring this restoration whatever it is you lost in this service is going to be restored in Jesus mighty name first Peter chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 I'll try to be quick it's a very very powerful powerful message that the Lord will have us here tonight I want your hearts to truly be open um, I'm just going to teach for the next 30 to 40 minutes and after that we are going to pray amen first Peter chapter 1 from verse 6 to 7 it says in this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while if need be you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of jesus christ somebody say amen to that so the topic for the message tonight is tested by fire i'll go back to read verse 7 of that scripture and i would like to read it in new living translation and a message the message bible he says these trials will show that your faith is genuine it is being tested as fire it is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold though your faith is far more precious than mere gold he says so when your faith remains strong through many trials that means there's a possibility for your faith to fall for your faith to become weak it says when your faith becomes strong or remains strong through many trials it says it will be it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when jesus christ is revealed to the whole world somebody say amen, amen. message translation says pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine when jesus wraps this all up in other words when this dispensation is done with which will end with the coming of the lord which most of us refer to as rapture says when jesus wraps this all up it's your faith not your gold that god will have on display as evidence of his victory in other words it is not the things you have acquired as the benefits of your salvation that will be displayed it is your faith that is the one thing that God will look at and say well done good and faithful servant so we see from the scripture we read two things first of all we see that gold is purified by fire so the writer is using a metaphor a metaphorical situation 
when goldsmiths that's what they call them isn't it when goldsmiths are going through the process of purifying gold and bringing it to its finished state of course gold we know is one of the precious metals and uh, is one of the material um, tokens by which wealth can be measured especially in the olden days the bible says that gold where we read there we see that gold is purified by fire now the writer of this that scripture use this metaphorical situation please take care of that sound use this metaphorical situation to try to describe how the faith of a believer is tested and tried so we see number one that gold is purified by fire for gold to be purely purified in other words to take out all the impurities as a matter of fact one time i was studying about the purification process of gold and i discovered and you can go do the study yourself you i discovered that one of the last stages of gold being purified of course which happens in fire is that certain metals are extracted from gold and you will not believe that these metals that are extracted as impurities are actually precious metals in themselves one of them is silver so silver is a precious metal but for gold to become pure gold it has to be removed and the second thing we saw in this scripture is that our faith is tried and purified and tested by trials our faith is tested is tried and purified by trials so the first thing is like a mathematical equation now you have equation one and equation two so equation one is that gold is purified by fire is that true and then equation two is that your faith will be tested or purified by by trials so just the way the fire is proverbs 17 verse 3 that's what it tells us it says the refining pot is for silver and furnace is for gold he said but the lord tests the hearts the crucible with which the faith of a believer is tested is trials and sufferings so go back to first peter chapter 5 let's read verse 7 again for a better understanding sorry first peter 1 verse 7 the text sorry it says that the genuineness of your faith so for your faith to become genuine to be proven as authentic as true as the very faith that is required for you as a believer to have the bible says be much more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of jesus christ now let's do some definition of terms definition of terms the first word we want to define is test test i'm trying to bring out the word as it is in the scripture so we can have a better understanding test let's try to define the word test as simple as we can get it it is the process get toward the authentication of a thing test is the process get towards the authentication of a thing authentication means to prove how genuine how true how real something is test is the process geared towards the authentication of a thing one time years ago somebody was telling me about a documentary that he watched about how mestis benz is tested actually the particular product of mestis now we're talking about is this huge buses what they call them marco polo buses right those huge buses 
those of you who have traveled from here to the east before those days i don't know if they still travel now like that if you have traveled with ife sinachi chisco which other one c and okoli what did this young shall grow which other one a kissons i don't know that one you are calling no i hope that one you are calling is not the one that breaks down on the road so you understand you have an idea of what i'm talking about now so somebody who had watched the documentary years ago was telling me how these cars are how these buses are fabricated or manufactured he said after they finish assembling everything they tilt the buses um is it about 45 or 60 degrees to tilt means to bend so they bend it at i think it's either 45 or 60 degrees if it falls they have to disassemble and start again it means that that particular boss does not have the required balance that is needed and i told you before that one of the ways mercedes benz engine is tested is that they keep it running for close to a thousand hours the way you start a car engine and keep it running like that and then they are putting oil putting a lot of things they want to test to see the competence the authentication of that engine that means that everything that will bear the certification of being true or being genuine or being real must be tested and above everything that we have in this life that will experience tests again and again your faith as a believer will be tested word number two definition of terms fire we've looked at the first word test let's look at another word fire fire is the crucible for testing and purifying fire is the crucible crucible for testing and purifying of course we're talking in this context now there are other uses of fire it destroys it can cook but we're not looking at that now we're looking in context of the, the scripture we read is a crucible for testing and for what purify so purifying so the test of a material <laughs> can happen when you bring it around the vicinity of fire if it is plastic what will happen instantly it melts if it is rubber it begins to stretch expand and elast if the heat is constant it will go beyond its usual size i don't know does it does it melt rubber melts too aha but when you bring metal is a different thing so every material when it is brought to the fire you will find different experiences so you see that the fire becomes a crucible to test the strength the durability the tensile stress and strain of that material it's also a crucible for purifying so when metals are purified unlike rubber and plastic it is melted or destroyed by fire but when you bring metals what happens is it is purified it is not burnt it is purified another definition for fire in the context of our teaching tonight it means suffering persecutions trials or challenges it means sufferings persecutions trials or challenges remember where we read in first peter it says that your your faith is tested by fire is that true so what it means is that you will have to go through sufferings persecutions remember romans 8 35 to 37 what does he says he says who shall separate us he didn't say what he said who i'm wondering why the bible gave that specification why the bible will give human qualities to inanimate experiences he said who shall separate us from the love of god of christ he said shall tribulation 
trials pestilence peril nakedness the sword in verse 36 it says we are killed all day long as it is written we are accounted for your sake we are counted as sheep to the slaughter but verse 37 says nay in all these things we are more than so the fire there's not literal fire is the sufferings that we'll have to go through the trials the persecutions and i don't mean to be sadistic this evening but let me tell you the gospel truth if you are a believer in fact if you are a man you must always experience trouble is it not job chapter 14 i don't know the verse if you can get it for us that says man is born to trouble right so for us being human beings we'll always encounter difficult situations troubling times troubling moments and now as a believer times two you will always have moments in your work with god in your life where you will go through troubles trials persecutions and you know in the midst of these things it will look like god is not there or it will look like god is silent how many of you have experienced it before or am i talking to myself i know you don't want this kind of message but just wait to the end okay don't judge the book by its cover wait to the end Some of us wish that these things were told you before you gave your life to Christ. You would have waited maybe for two weeks to consider. <laughs> but you know, many of us who gave our life to Christ, depending on the situation, the circumstance surrounding you that time or the place where you were, it looked like it will be ice cream and a roller coaster ride from the beginning till Jesus comes. And some of us, when we gave our life to Christ, we began to experience the benefits of salvation god was doing great things in your life it was just one testimony or another the joy of salvation was with you act two scene one here comes this day <laughs> where you wake up in your in the morning and everything you account disappears and you were used to in the past you were used to anytime there's a problem you cry to god and instantly there's an answer and now you have prayed and fasted for three days and it looks like the more you pray the more the heavens are silent over you brother what you may be going through at that moment in your life may be what the bible refers to as the fire of trials the tests that you must need go through as a believer and this thing is targeted towards our faith first peter chapter 4 verse 12 to 14 and 15 i'm trying to lay good foundation so we can continue first peter chapter 4 verse 12 to 14 and then 15 beloved do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you in other words the trials you're about to go through don't think that god is punishing you <laughs> or don't think that god is unaware it's not strange it is familiar with the very life of a christian he said but rejoice to the extent that you partake of christ's sufferings that when his glory is revealed you may also be glad with exceeding joy verse 14 if you are reproached for the name of christ blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of god rests upon you on their part he is blasphemed speaking of unbelievers but on your part he is glorified somebody say a big amen to that amen. let's let's have the last verse verse 15. he said but let none of you suffer as a murderer there's caution now a thief an evildoer or a or as a busy body in other people's matters keep this scripture so we strike a balance here so the bible is saying in as much as you will go through trials there will be moments where you will have to suffer and it is because your faith is undergoing a process of purification your faith is undergoing a process where it is tested to authenticate its source the bible is giving a caution 
that is not every suffering as a believer that is a trial some people suffer because they do wrong that one is not suffering that one is justice it's punishment some people suffer as a result of their ignorance of the word of god that one is not trial say amen to that because there are a few of us here that what you may be going through now may not really be a trial it may be an ignorance that you have entertained knowingly or knowingly to you of a law in the kingdom that should bring you to an advantage he also puts a disclaimer there that sometimes people suffer not necessarily because they are going through trials but because the bible calls them busy body or they are lazy now when a lazy man the bible says he that refuses to walk should not eat so if somebody is lazy and not doing anything and the person is below 70 years and the person claims they are suffering is that one trial answer me now it's not trial they are suffering as a result of their laziness So the suffering we want to deal with today is not have, at least we have we are clear now to we have we've been able to partition everything if you are suffering because you are ignorant of something that is missing that needs to be added to your life to bring you to the experience of the riches of his glory then tonight you need to ask the lord for wisdom you need to ask him for revelation you need to ask him for understanding if you are suffering because as a as a consequence of a law you violated that is the case of whatsoever a man sows he will reap you see when people commit sin or when people sin against god especially if they are believers god does not punish them no i agree that god may chastise sometimes depending on now this has to do with your personal consecration with god generally all sins are sin however when you come into christ and you begin to walk with god the spirit of god imprints on your heart the very laws of god so that you can know them obey them and do them that's why it says that the law will now be in your heart that means that some things that other people will do and get away with it not necessarily because it's a sin to you you may do it and it will attract negative consequences because according to the law of the spirit of life that is at work in your heart this particular thing god will not have you be indulged in it do you understand what i'm saying i hope you are not lost inside and outside please follow because i want us to really get it so somebody may do something and get away with it but you will do it and then you may have to face the consequences not because god hates you it's called chastisement it is because in your own walk with god it has been personalized that this should not be known among you if you read colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 it says if you will then be seated with christ he says seek those things that are above and not below where christ is seated at the right hand of god he says set your heart on things above your minds on things above and not on things below he said for you were dead and your heart your life was hid in christ and in god he said when christ who is your life appears that's verse 4 now you shall appear with him in glory then verse 5 he says therefore mortify the word mortify means to put to death or to separate because death means to separate but if you read verse 8 he uses the word put off in verse 5 he says mortify that is to kill in verse 8 he says put off so there are some sins that god says stay away from it just put it off you these ones are not really a threat as it were they are not really strong temptations that will make you compromise in your work with god but the one he spoke about in verse 5 this one is general he said put to death because every time you indulge in it your salvation experience that maintains the righteousness of god that is at work in you and you, the, the life of holiness that you are living is compromised god knows that you will not be able to recover from the guilt and condemnation that's why god says 
put to death have nothing to do with it so if somebody is suffering now because he, he violated God's laws by doing the things that God has told him not to do that one is not trial that one is a chastisement that should produce sorrow in your heart because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10 that godly sorrow leads to repentance so the reason for the chastisement and the little suffering when you commit that sin is so that sorrow is produced in your heart you are not happy with what you have done and then it will push you to repentance but be careful that that sorrow does not push you to guilt and condemnation are we here so back to the teaching now so you know we are talking about suffering as in trial you didn't do anything to deserve it but it has come to you because you have come to the point in your work with god where your faith will have to go through a process where you will have to be tried if you are with me say amen. amen so we see also that god is interested in the midst of the trials that you go through in the midst of the trials of your faith uh, uh, of your trials you see that god is interested in your faith what god is interested in the most when we go through trials is our faith that's what god is looking at is what what happens to your faith what your faith reveals if it is perfected in the midst of that situation or it falls short it falls weak that's what god is truly interested in in hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 to 36 the bible says therefore cast not away your confidence the word, another word for confidence is the word faith it's a cast not away your confidence which has great reward in verse 36 it says for you have need of patience or endurance so that after you have done the will of god you may receive the promises so sometimes when you seem to be believing god for something and it doesn't come when you want it the bible says don't stop believing it says at that moment you need to add the virtue of endurance of patience to your faith of course you know that every time you've put your faith on the line it is because probably you have a need a request that you have placed on god but as that need lingers and is not fulfilled there may be some level of un uncomfort that you may experience the bible says that to throw away your faith at that point it says that you will endure that you are patient so that at the end of the day you will receive the promise in other words delay is not denial tell your neighbor delay is not denial tell the other one so they can wake up from sleep delay is not denial so let's try to define faith now because we are saying that god is interested in our faith and that our faith is what is tested when we go through trials when we go through sufferings so let's try to look at take a brief look at the understanding of faith in galatians chapter 2 verse 20 paul made a declaration there that i feel captures the experience of our journey in faith he says but i have been crucified with christ for i have been crucified with christ he says nonetheless it's not i that live but christ that lives in me he said and the life that i now live i live by faith in the son of god is that how he puts it in new king james faith in the son of god look at this scripture i have been crucified to crucify means to kill something so when you gave when you became born again the first thing that happened was that you died so that christ can now be the one living inside of you that's why it is called born again the only reason why you need to born again is because something that was born before is dead that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is now but you say apostle i didn't literally i didn't fall down that I'm, st I'm still here the death there we are talking about is separation that when you came to christ you were separated from living your life depending on your flesh or the life that flows in your blood to depending on the life that flows from your spirit 
that's what it means in that scripture it says it's not i that live but christ that lives in me and the life that i live that i now live i live by faith in the son of god so it was by faith that i became saved i was introduced to a new life by faith it therefore means that it will take that same faith to continue growing on the course of that life in fact in romans chapter 1 verse 17 and in habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14 verse 4 rather the bible says that the, the just shall live by faith in habakkuk 2 4 it says the just shall live by his faith the faith that brought you into christ that brought your salvation is what will sustain your growth and your journey with god romans chapter 10 verse 6 to 10 still talking about this faith that we have the bible says but the righteousness of of faith speaks in this way do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven that is to bring christ from above or who will descend into the abyss that is to bring christ up from the dead he said but what does he say the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach what is the word of faith that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead you will be saved that is the faith you believed in your heart that jesus was raised from the dead for your justification and you confess with your mouth that he is your lord and your savior that is what the bible calls faith somebody say faith, faith. so there is a connection between the believing of your heart and the confession of your mouth your faith is anchored around that you now see why the bible says that you should keep your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life life because your life now in christ jesus is going to be by what by faith did you see jesus hanging on the cross before you got born again no were you there when they killed him no do you even know whether it is true or not no you just believed what you heard in your heart and then you openly declared with your mouth are you now seeing why that faith will be tested to know whether it really came from an understanding that is rooted in your heart because it is in the heart that you find conviction many young people don't know what conviction is because if many young people know what conviction is we will not have problem with commitment but i discovered sadly that commitment is a problem among young people yes or yes yes we find it difficult to commit to god to commit to the service of god go three sundays miss two sundays we always dilly dally but commitment says be consistent we find it difficult to commit to obeying and being subjected to our parents sometimes we want to flare up and shout sometimes you actually shout in your heart if god was to amplify what you said in your heart when your mother spoke harshly against you <laughs> even the devil will run when he heard it and make sure you don't stand up and leave now that i'm talking to you we find it difficult to commit even to relationship that's why after three months the lady is done with that guy and she's moving to the next person commitment is a problem you know why lack of conviction am i talking to you so the moment well this is not relationship but let me just help you so those of you who are single the moment a young man comes to you or a lady because these days it can happen on both sides amen and there's nothing wrong i believe there's nothing wrong in whether the lady or the guy confessing to the other person that they love the person I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that you know some some ladies are so proud that they don't want to say anything they're waiting for the person till another lady came and stole the husband and now you are submitting prayer requests when god gave you your husband you know in in the north in northern nigeria our ladies are so shoulder high we feel that everything should come to us we have this entitlement mentality how do they say it in that comedy sorry oh. now i'm not saying go and just jack no no i'm just saying 
that there's nothing wrong in telling the other person whether it's the guy or the lady telling the other person or confessing what's in your heart there's nothing wrong that confession does not make you weak actually it makes you strong because the bible says the righteousness of faith speaks let me tell you something if somebody tells you i love you huh? from the day that person made that statement he or she has entered into a process of proving the genuineness of that statement by committing to you so one of the true tests of love is what commitment unfortunately the year is rounded up i don't i don't think we have space for relationship maybe next year we can do that so i love you means i'll stand with you even when i saw your picture and they say you went they're accusing you of going to a party and dancing with people oh yes but you said you love that doesn't mean go to party and say hey, i have to say if you try it we will lie you here and it's not your faith now your body will be tested with lashes <laughs> and i'm just kidding amen? amen let's go back to our teaching that's why the faith will be tested to know if it is a reality in the heart that has been reflected through confession but unfortunately we live in the last days where people are double tongued people can say something today and say another thing tomorrow thank god that god is not like man thank god that when god said he would change your story he didn't come back the next day and say sorry i was only joking am i speaking to somebody we've not even started the lesson let's go in john 20 verse 31 i'm trying to define for us or bring a common understanding for us about our faith he said but these are written that you may believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that believing you may have life in his name so it means that the reason why all the signs that were written in the book of john were spelt or you know were, were, were spelled out or were clearly written was so that we can have faith to believe that jesus is the christ and the son of god and that we may have eternal life i want to show you something that we call the apostles creed those of you who belong to the catholic roman catholic denomination or protestant or methodist or lutheran you may have come across this document the apostles creed now it's um, a citation that captures all that our faith is concerned with so that by just reading or reciting it you will understand what your faith is all about do you have it or do i read it from here the apostles creed let me try and see okay let me see if i can read it from here the apostles creed you have it there is on the screen i believe in god Huh? I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his holy holy son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary he suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to hell the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of god the father almighty from there he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church now the reason why you have an asterisk there is because the catholic is talking about is not roman catholic he's talking about the universal church the body of christ the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen brothers and sisters everything you just read now is what is the content of your faith so if there is anything amongst these things we read that is missing in your understanding 
it means your faith is not complete it means you have to be born again again today the reason we have to go this basic is because <laughs> satan is flying around with deception and that's because we have a lot of half big believers we have a lot of people who are only interested in what god can do but even the foundations of their faith they don't know and these are the things that will stand as pillars when you go through seasons of tests one of the things i love about that apostles creed is the belief in resurrection that means there will be death because it takes death for you to have resurrection in the kingdom faith for salvation is the bedrock for the access to things faith for salvation is the bedrock for access to things that we can receive in the kingdom these things are what we call the benefits of salvation the benefits of salvation in hebrews chapter 6 and in verse 9 it talks about these things in other words all that we stand to gain physically or materially now that we have been saved it says but beloved we are confident of better things concerning you yes things that accompany salvation though we seek we speak in this manner what are the things that accompany salvation very simple psalms 103 verse 2 bless the lord O my soul and forget not his benefit verse 3 who forgiveth your all your iniquities and heals all your diseases huh let's go on who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies do you like what you are reading these are the things that accompany salvation next verse who satisfies your mouth with good things that is provision that is abundance so that your youth is renewed like the eagles that is preservation somebody say amen. amen now your faith for salvation is what gives you access to these things the reason why you can receive these things is because you are saved so your assurance of these things is anchored upon the faith for your salvation therefore our trials and sufferings are for the purification of our faith job 23 verse 10 says he knows the way that i take after he has tried me i will comfort as gold i will comfort as gold after he has tested me i will comfort as gold in psalm 17 verse 3 he says you have tested me i like that scripture you have tested my heart May somebody come to a point where you can make this declaration in your life. The person, he was praying to God. Oh. He said, you have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night when nobody was there. You have tried me and found nothing. Why? I have proposed that my mouth shall not transgress. May that be somebody's testimony. It is possible to get to this point. You can use this to pray. You can use this as a legal tender. This is a CV somebody is presenting to God. He said, God, you have tested me. You have tested my heart. You visited me in the, in the night. You came to me when nobody was there. But I didn't compromise. What's the next thing that will follow that? Answer me on this matter. The problem we have in church this day is not that God cannot answer prayer. It's that how many Christians can be bold to declare this? When you remember what you did yesterday. And then you know sometimes we now say eh, well you know nobody is perfect and all of that ah. the bible says be ye holy for i the lord am holy let me talk to you individually let me speak to everybody individually your life as a believer the work of holiness is non-negotiable it is not only a possibility it is actually a reality by default when you become born again because the bible said didn't say do ye holy he said be ye holy be means it's your nature naturally when he says let us make man in our image and after our likeness the image is the being part the likeness is the doing part so by default when you become a christian the nature of holiness is inside of you 
that is that that is what makes you say no to sin when it comes in fact that is what helps you to identify that this is sin that pricking in your conscience in your heart is the nature of holiness but at that point you have the choice to yield to it or to turn away and in these last days amongst us here may god raise men that will not soil their hands men that will stand for god at all times and if you have sold your hands may god show you mercy Amen. let's look at examples of men and women who were tested and tried whose faith were tested and tried we have seen what our faith is all about that is what brought about salvation and we have seen that the bible says it will our faith will have to be tested through trials and sufferings let's look at an example of some people in scripture whose faith were tested and tried number one is abraham whom we call the father of faith in romans chapter 4 in verse 18 to 22 the bible gives us a discourse about the process of the testing of abraham's faith he said who contrary to hope in hope believe so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be to understand verse 18 read verse 19 and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old the deadness of sarah's sarah's womb you now see what it means when he says who contrary to hope believed in hope when god promised him a child even when he was close to a hundred sperm cannot be produced again at 90 sarah's womb has locked it's not even menopause it don't lock the padlock has even been rusted but the bible says he did not consider his own body nor the deadness of sarah's body verse 20 now he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief but was strengthened in faith giving glory to god and being fully convinced this is faith here that what he had promised he was also able to perform and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness in other words when god spoke to abraham said i will give you a son i will bless you and give you a child and all of that many years passed before that promise was fulfilled now all those years abraham suffered from mockery he suffered from shame in fact one time god came to him and said call yourself abraham father of many nations don't you think that is stupid you don't have a child and now you are calling yourself father of many nations i'm sure even the servants may have mocked him the servant may have said we need to look for a psychiatrist for our 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 god this man don't they mad but all that was happening was that his faith was being tested and in the testing of his faith romans now declared to us that god now saw that the hope of abraham was not in his physical body or his wife's womb he was not he was not hoping that the promise will be fulfilled using their own body because as a matter of fact their bodies were dead scientifically but rather his faith was anchored that he who had promised is able to fulfill it the bible says i'm being fully convinced that verse 21 that he who had promised is able to do it how many times have you fully believed that what god told you in secret he's able to perform in the open even when years have passed how many times it's a question i'm asking how many times can i tell you something about the prophetic the prophetic happens by faith the bible says he that prophesies let him prophesy according to the measure of faith let me tell you something god may tell me to speak to bishop he has a word for bishop and he has not told me anything but it will take faith for me to stand on that word and walk to bishop and tell him god has a word for you as a matter of fact your time has come today somebody say amen, amen. while i'm saying that i'm waiting for the word to come You now see that you can't walk in the supernatural you can't operate spiritual gifts without faith what if god does not say anything won't i have embarrassed myself amongst hundreds of people yesterday we had the meeting in bpi and while i was counseling people on the line i saw a woman 
with one of our sisters sister josephine and instantly there's a sign god used to tell me he's going to talk about somebody and i won't tell you the sign and as soon as i saw that sign i knew i i greeted i said is this your first time she said yeah. i said god has a word for you i said it again god has a word for you there was no word but me i'm no longer afraid of being ashamed at least if god doesn't say anything the one who will be looked at as a liar is me and hold on the bible says i have been crucified with christ not i that live but christ that so you are looking at me as a shame but me i can't feel shame because i i died for you were dead and your life was hid in christ oh come on you didn't understand that so i looked at her i said god has a word there was nothing no. when she came close to me i was holding her hand there was nothing and then god began to talk you know why i waited on my feet i knew that god must say something now it is when you believe god like that that you can enter the class of abraham in genesis 22 from verse 1 to 5 and then 7 to 8 the bible says god tested abraham's faith by asking him to sacrifice his child he said take now your son your only son isaac whom you love and god waited for hagar to have carried ishmael away before he spoke to abraham remember god had promised him isaac now god is saying go and kill that child so what will now be the evidence that you promise me that i will have children if isaac dies it's just like after being broke for two months and one day somebody remembers you and sends you twenty thousand and then few minutes after that the voice of god came to you and said give everything out you know these people that are laughing eh they are the ones that will always say god forbid i rebuke you and I'm part of you because I've done it before. Say amen. amen. It's a school of faith. Everybody's on the journey of faith. The Bible says Abraham took his son, carried the wood that was needed for the fire, and his two servants, and went on. In verse 5, he told, this was where Abraham's faith was proven. The Bible says in Romans 10 verse 6 that the righteousness of faith speaks. There were two times Abraham prophesied by faith that Isaac would not be killed. The first time was in verse 5. Abraham told the servants, he said, Stay here, while I and the lad will go yonder and worship and return. And, and, meanwhile, he was going to kill that lad. But he was so full of faith that he didn't know he had prophesied that Isaac would not die. The second part was in verse 7 and 8 when Isaac asked him. He said, here is the fire, the wood for the fire. Here is the knife. But where is the lamb for the sacrifice? He said, my son, God himself will provide for himself a lamb. That was the second prophecy by faith. Even when he knew that the instruction was, kill your son. That's what Job meant in Job chapter 19 when he says, But I know that my Redeemer liveth. A man is dying and he's talking about life. Can you look for that scripture for us? But I know that my, my Redeemer liveth. Job 19. And he shall stand at last on the earth. He said, Even though this flesh is destroyed, or my skin is destroyed he said yet in my flesh i will see god a man is dying and say he's still prophesying by faith <laughs> it is in trials that you will know if a man has faith or not even if your name is faith and he shall stand at last on the earth verse 26 he said even though I, and after my skin is this oh my god and after my skin is destroyed if your skin is destroyed waiting will happen i die you day now he said this i know oh ask your neighbor what do you know where you are is a product of what you know where you are now where you are now in life where you are measure everything in your life your spiritual life your relationship with god your finances everything about you now is a summation of what you know for i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded knowledge is the bedrock for conviction people chicken out on god because they really didn't know anything they believed nothing actually they were just following the process 
God of pneumatic, now my papa, oh, but you see, the test of life, eh, is not pneumatic test, it's you. Right there. So they call you when you live here. Look at what happened with, what, with Pastor Henry. Everything is fine and all of a sudden your child is dying before you. I know what some of you will do by that time. Call Apostle Sharp Sharp. No time to waste. So it's only apostles whose faith should be alive and strong all day. Ba? Apostle has become doctor on call. Amen. And actually that's what it means to be a man of God. You have to be ready at all times. You see why you can't live an ordinary life. You have to live like a native doctor. Even worse than a native doctor. Because people will call you at the oddest moment and expect you to be in the spirit. They called you, you picked. They heard that you just woke up from sleep from your voice. And here is a lifeless body. Apostle, pray, oh, you must not die. <laughs> Amen. So the way they depend on you, there is, the, there is the trick. If you are a man of God or a woman of God, here is the trick. The way they cast all their hope and faith on you, that's how you, you lean on God. So when they call you like that, I say, hey, fire on the mountain. Turn to God. Don't follow them and cry. Turn to God and say, God, what are you saying? God will say, tell them it is well. And the next time I tell you it is well, you better believe it. I, I don't have any other thing to say apart from that. Another person who was tested. I don't have time to take you to verse 12 of Genesis 22. Because of time, let's leave it. You know, but because what God told him there, he said, Well, I know that now you fear God and all of that. Verse chapter 2, I'm sorry, number 2. Example of another person who was, whose faith was tested. Number 2, Isaac. In Genesis 26, verse 1 to 12, there was famine in the land and Isaac was about to leave to go down to Egypt like his father did during his time don't be too quick to follow others to do what they are doing during times of crisis we have too many for the follow Christian is what you see other people doing for some people that's how they started playing bets is because they saw people doing it and they felt it has become a lucrative way of earning that's why they followed no follow follow christian have your own god know your own god for yourself isaac wanted to follow follow abraham and say oh let's go to egypt and you see egypt was always a place to trap the people of god because when abraham went to egypt the problem of his life started when he went to egypt pharaoh was looking for his, his wife when pharaoh realized it was abraham's wife pharaoh gave him silver gold many things male and female servants among those female servants was Hagar. He left with Egypt as part of him. Chapters later, it was that Hagar that became pregnant from him and introduced polygamy. Every time the people of God subscribe to Egypt, <laughs> the flesh comes into dominion. And the Egypt I'm talking about now is not really Egypt as in Egypt, the country. I'm talking about every time we are in crisis situation and we follow, follow other people to apply things in the flesh. I'll preach it out of you today don't worry God told him stay in this land for in this land I'll bless you in a land where there is dry season you are saying you bless me verse 12 he say and Isaac sold in that land don't you think the Philistines began to laugh at him and say this guy is foolish no rain and you are digging ground to plant the Bible says he sold in that land and in the same year he reaped a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. His faith was tested. He wanted to go to where was a, 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 a juicy land, a greener pasture. But realize in this life that there is no green pasture anywhere. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down. It's only God that knows the location of green pasture. And greener pasture is not a location, it's a position in the realm of the spirit. It's an atmosphere that can rest upon you and turn a dry land to a land of gold. Otherwise, you'll follow people that want to japa without purpose. You'll follow people that want to travel. I'm tired of this land. But God told him, stay in this land. 
as i said that god just spoke to somebody stay where you are that's where god will meet you god blessed him number three the three hebrew boys shadrach meshach and abednego you see that story in daniel chapter 3 verse 1 through to 16 17 28 and to 30. remember the story of the statue of gold that nebuchadnezzar made he fabricated a statue of himself made with gold and anybody who will not bow before that statue and worship it will be thrown into a fiery furnace remember we're talking about faith tested by fire and when i was reading that scripture god began to show me in figurative terms exactly how it plays out for us today in our time now the fairy furnace is poverty and hardship many people in different nations with crumbling economy are going through that now now subsidy how much is well only god knows i don't know and i don't think i should know amen because nothing really changed whether the fuel went up or went down i was operating by another economy already so nothing changed but let me say that is affected by the economy as a very man's poverty and hardship and let me tell you in these last days you've not seen anything many economy, many nations will be, will be brought to its knees because it's a spirit that has been released and that is why this is the time where we need to tap into the knowledge of the laws that make for financial abundance in the kingdom this is the time where you need to start surviving by the economy of the kingdom don't wait for things to get better they may never get better be now today one dollar was how much one and something naira. We thought we'd get better. Shit it has gotten, but how much is it now? It's almost a thousand naira. As a figuratively in a day, it's spirit of mammon. Because of poverty, and many people have compromised faith and work. They are worshiping the status of God. They are worshiping mammon. When you do a job that doesn't give you time to work at all, is that not worshiping of mammon? When you have to compromise, forge a document. Simply don't get something. Are you not bowing before this? So I'm with you. Everything down. But the faith of these three Hebrew boys were tested. What did they tell the They said, I'm not careful to answer you on this matter. Is we are, our mind is made up. The God will serve the devourers. Instead of the devourers, we will not bow. We are not intending to bow in any way. It's not to stand here in the church. I'm telling you, I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. So God, I rebuke you. God, I rebuke you. He didn't know what he was saying. To be sure, it's when the person sees the church and he takes it, one hundred and eighty U-turn and walks away. When he walks away, five million, forty million. A Jewish opportunity that can send him overseas just compromised. At that point, that person's faith has been revealed. That actually, the person was not interested in material as much as he or she is interested in God. You must hear this whether you are streaming online or you are inside or outside because god is raising many of us as envoys that will be sent as ambassadors of the kingdom to the systems of this world a world filled with corruption and darkness if we don't take a stand and our faith is not defined you'll be swallowed up before you know it but god will set us free they refuse to bow and when they were tied up and thrown into the fire the fire became a comfortable place why will you be tested number one and then we'll pray why will you be tested number one to reveal the state of your heart to reveal the state of your heart this is why your faith will be tested to reveal the state of your heart god is interested in our heart oh not every other thing you say is not what you said with your mouth you are the love of my life you are the hope that i cling to you mean more than this world to me i won't trade you for silver or gold I won't trade you for riches unto you are you are you are my
God say thank you now match your confession with an experience you, you were the one who said I will not trade you for silver or gold then the lecturer announced if you give 10,000 naira I will change your grade from C to B Psalms 139 verse 23 to 24 he says search me Lord and know me he said try my heart how does he put it try me and know my anxieties the word anxiety is there is the word thoughts search me oh God and know my heart when last did you pray that prayer to God I know the last prayer you prayed miracle money oh God as people are receiving me I receive and you receive in Jesus name now in addition to your miracle money when last did you pray and say God search my heart why am I doing what I'm there fame at the end is this why i'm following god many people get into a church and serve their way to the top why for affirmation for public affirmation for public reputation your church used to do award for people for workers every every year the year that they say we don't have money for award we will not they say no we must go why so that you they will call your name again and again you know we live in a society now where everybody wants to be affirmed by people we are always looking for people affirmation public affirmation you are concerned about people's opinion about you where was the last time you asked for god's opinion people will look at you and say mighty apostle god say you are a thief you took my money say god i didn't take your money god said the money i asked you to give yesterday you didn't give it but that's the mighty apostle that people are looking at oh. yet God said this one is a thief a man of God was praying one time I think it was Apostle Johnson Suleiman years ago I think either 2016 or so I was watching in one of his programs he was praying for a program a major program they have in their administration in their ministry rather and then God spoke to him God I think he wanted to sow a seed or something so he wrote down three names that he will sow a seed for you know the program believing God and all of that and when he looked at the first name I was praying God said I don't know him he said his pen fell from his hand he said God you say what God said I don't know him he said God what of this one the second name God said I used to know him He now laid down he stopped praying for the program the program was in the evening no that's in the he, he left the program and said god do you know me if you don't know these two people is it me you know <laughs> you want to hear the answer god gave him god said johnson it is not for you to ask it's somebody that will ask me for you he said he stood up from that prayer place and he said i couldn't pray again program will happen in a few hours he was he was shaking he said he thought judge rapture had happened he called his wife when he heard his wife was okay you are, <laughs> are you hearing what i'm telling you search my heart some of you need to go back and have a retreat with god and ask him to search your heart don't 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 boast too much in yourself oh i'm speaking to myself too you'll be amazed what god will tell you about you in deuteronomy chapter 8 in verse 2 to 4 god said this is the reason why i made you suffer and I, I took you through the wilderness when i brought you out of egypt he said and you shall remember that the lord your god led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what is in your heart whether you will keep his commandment or not so he humbled you allowed you to hunger so for them their own suffering their own test was they went through hunger he fed them with manna which you did not know nor your fathers knew that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds the first reason why you are tested is to reveal the state of your heart you know why your heart is what will determine all that god will do with you 
for you and through you your heart your prayer is from your heart that god picks it not from your mouth i'm telling you you better believe me this night it's not your mouth you can bo -bo 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 for five hours that, that's not what god looks at it's what you that's why you can bo -bo 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 it's after three hours you started connecting you know why that was when your heart opened heart and now with people pray with miles in their heart with unforgiveness in their heart with bitterness in fact as i just spoke somebody just padlocked he put a second padlock in his heart said apostle this one no matter what you talk i know go release them you know what you do me no problem but i pray that before the end of my sermon that i would have made a gentle appeal to your heart that the authentication of your faith is what is in your heart why does god anoint people is it because they pray and fast not really you no there were ministrations i went for sick and the way god moved i became afraid of the god that moved all those things are good prayer fasting and all of that but the last thing god will check before he anoints you with his presence is your heart god will see whether it is just to make a name for yourself so that they can call you a name a title you know we are living in an age of title all kinds of title tomorrow now i put apostle dr jonathan lagan jp square because i went to jerusalem twice now men will clap for me but what is god say is god moved by that the bible said god is no respecter of persons when we get to heaven god will not address me as apostle he will call me jonathan we are that's how we all are before him heart some miracles that have been delayed in some families is the heart you are asking god to change the story of your family and your family are bitter towards one wicked uncle that took all that belonged to your father when he died God is saying forgive that uncle first before i restore you the bible says in job 42 verse 10 that god turned the captivity of job and restored him when he prayed if you want to go far with god you will listen to what i'm saying this night but if you want to hang around receiving the benefits of salvation no problem and god will freely give you but you will not call what you have lived christianity but god is talking to his people tonight number two why you will be tested to authenticate your faith in other words to know whom you truly believe to authenticate your faith second timothy 1 verse 12 says but i know whom i believe and i'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which i've committed to him to know whom you believe to authenticate your faith the source the genuineness and strength of your faith is what is revealed when your faith is authenticated whether your your faith is anchored on god or something else in fact paul said it this way i have fought a good fight i think that's second timothy 4 7 i have finished the race and i have kept the faith so at the end of our journey on this earth there is a faith you must keep that your trust in god remained resolute in hebrews chapter 11 verse 35 to 39 the bible spoke about heroes of faith this time around there were people who suffered he said others were tortured not accepting deliverance he says some were sown asunder verse 39 is very interesting he says all these died verse 39 having obtained a good testimony through faith god now verified their faith, that their faith in him was authentic yet they did not receive the promise the same thing in verse 13 he said these all died not having received the promise will you believe god to death even when you didn't receive it number three why you will be tested to produce godly virtues in you to produce godly virtues in you james chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 says count it all joy when you fall into trials and 
and tribulations knowing that the trials of your faith work at patience you see and let patience have its full work in you so that you will be perfect and complete wanting nothing lacking nothing to produce godly virtues one of such virtues is patience patience is a good virtue that needs to be added to your faith for you to obtain the promise for you to continue on your work with god for you to be consistent another virtue is knowledge so one of the reasons why we are tested is to produce situations have a way of producing virtues in you i've seen people who are on a normal day very good talkers good talkatives the day you see them quiet check they are hungry they've not eaten yes or no now a virtue was produced there isn't it the bible says that we should be swift to hear and slow to it says for in the multitude of words sin is not lacking so god reduce your 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 susceptibility to sin by giving you a little hunger say amen to that somebody say a little hunger <laughs> To produce godly virtues for one year straight god is making you give like a crazy person and even you now you feel that you need to see a psychiatric because something you don't know what's wrong with you why can't i enjoy what i have could it be that god wants to produce a virtue of contentment the bible says in first timothy 6 verse 6 for godliness with contentment is great gain he said for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we will take nothing out money prosperity has killed many people not because it intended to but it was because they didn't have the virtue to manage it a young man at 35 and he can boast of millions in his account and several assets hey, okay let's watch how you live your life if you can still mix up with rich people and common poor people let's let's see A virtue of contentment some of you god wants to bless you but right now eh if he blesses you like this you are an intercontinental ballistic miser you will take off you will just take dubai has been on your mind since last year and god is saying it's good to travel to dubai but there are more superior reasons for why you need money what of my house what of my kingdom? What of my servants who need to be taken care of? Did the Bible not say, how shall they hear except it is preached? And how shall they be preached except someone is sent? What of helping the poor? There are more superior purposes for why you should acquire material wealth than showing off. You go online, you see all kinds of things. Leave it for them. Leave it for the celebrity. Leave it for them. Let's be focused. why why must a man draw his reputation why will you draw your sense of self-worth from things that can perish why why you are telling me that the worth of your whole life is that glk that you pack outside oh come on now are there not better models of mercedes benz than that that means you are telling me that if you are if if your worth is the car you drive or the house you have they are good those things are awesome but if your life's worth and your reputation is sourced from there ah you have all men most miserable because every car will knock one day you are trying to tell me that that's the finishing point of your life that god will produce so much godly virtues in you that a time will come where you can walk around with 100 million and nobody will know you are the same person you can enter a market and preach and share tracts and stand there somebody told me the story of a man that built what they call that place um this big plaza in wuse what's they call that banex that he was a millionaire he's a bishop he was a millionaire at a young age in his 20s and he devised a way of preaching doing evangelism he had a rolls royce that time he would put megaphone on it and drive to the market and preach there you even the tire of rolls royce if you get her see you see you see this is 
how God is saving us, oh, I'm telling you, because many people have perished because of people have heart attack because of money. Something that can go and come. Heart attack. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. Amen. To produce godly virtues in you. And number four, for your perfectioning. First Peter 5 verse 10 says, After we have suffered for a while, He will perfect us, establish us, strengthen and settle us. Finally, before we pray, what do you do while going through the test? Number one, rejoice always in the Lord. What do you do while you are going through the tests, the trials, the sufferings? What should I do? Number one, rejoice always in the Lord. Philippians 4 verse 4 says so. 1 Thessalonians 5 16 says rejoice always. Rejoice always. It says in James 1 verse 2, count it all joy when you go through diverse trials. Rejoice. I used to say that we don't rejoice because all is well. We rejoice till all is well. Joy and rejoicing is a command. It's not circumstantial. It says rejoice always. It's a command to rejoice. Find a way and express joy. Even in your pain. Fella say suffering and smiling. Is that true? No, this generation didn't hear so much of fella. Rejoice. Dance when you see instead of credit a lot, you are seeing debit. Out of the 800 naira you have, they have debited 200 naira. Now you are praying for God to add. After praying for one hour, you went and saw debit. What did what did the Bible say? Rejoice. Jump for joy. Be excited. Dance. Bishop Oedipo said one time when his wife came to visit him. Then I think the, the church was in Kaduna. That there were 21 people that day in church. And he was jumping with joy. The wife said, ah, just 21? Is this how big? No one. And you say you are busy. I thought you had hundreds of people. That the 21 that day was another new person came plus his wife, 21. Today, give us a picture of, of that tent, Taban, uh, Faith Tabernacle. He rejoiced when they were just 19 to 21 to 50 to 100. Now they have a tent that can seat 50,000. As a matter of fact, they are already building an ark now that can seat close to 130,000 people with branches everywhere if you don't thank god and be joyful where you are in suffering forget about seeing the next level the bible says with joy we will draw water from the well of salvation it said those who sow in tears will reap in joy joy is a season it's a season that ushers you into the harvest it's like a ticket a boarding pass you need to enter a plane if you don't have joy forget about the harvest forget about the glory rejoice in that state to dance there Look at that. But he was jumping even when they were 19. So you, you, you shed flyers and hands and everything as a man of God. And only five people came for the prayer. We were there before. Rejoice, my brother, my sister. Rejoice. For you will speak to nations. That's what you do in the time of trials and suffering. Rejoice. Even while you are shedding tears, be joyful. Be excited. Because Job says, for he knows the way that I take. After he has tried me, I will come forth as gold. You know that this is not your end. You know that you will not perish here. That God did not bring you this far to leave you here. This is just a transient point. It's a transition. People may laugh at you, may mock at you. No problem. And may God keep them alive to see you in your glorified form. Rejoice. Be happy. Be excited. Thank the Lord. Bless Him always. Number two, trust God. Trust the God of the process. Trust the God of the process. First, First Thessalonians 5.24 I have to rush now because of time. First Thessalonians 5.24 Can you help me please because of time? First Thessalonians 5 24. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. 
so trust the God of the process he who has called you is faithful the wilderness period trust him to hold your hand and walk with you number three Give yourself to daily work and consistent improvement. Give yourself to daily work and consistent improvement. While you are going through the process, while you are going through the trial, give yourself to daily work and consistent improvement. Keep working on yourself. Keep building capacity. Keep trying and attempting to do one thing or another. Don't sit idle. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 God hates idleness I tell you Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 He says whatever your hand finds to do do what do it with all your might for there is no work or device of knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going do something especially as a young man as a young woman you are praying for God to change your story try everything you can Get your hands on be by all means be doing something. Don't sit idle. At least God and Satan has agreed on one thing that they will never use a lazy person. You go to the occult. I was discussing with somebody this morning that if you see the guys from the other side, if you see the price they pay for result, as Christians we can't do it. Somebody will go and meet a malam and they'll tell him we we'll have to bury one cow. And kill four chickens and two goats and he will give them all that and add five hundred thousand to it then the malam will wake all his boys and they will pray all night but believers mention that one now say he's a fake pastor when it comes to what we can do laziness will not allow us is always and every time do you see people who have this blame game mentality any person who always blames people blames situation blames circumstances blames his tools blames his environment blames everything in fact when he woke up in the morning i couldn't move he blamed his leg that my leg refused to that person is a certified lazy person certified by standard organization of nigeria <laughs> my father will always tell me that a lazy man quarrels with his tools do something find something let me tell you it is better you attempt and fail than not do anything at all at least you learn when you fail what happens when you don't do anything one of the revivalists of old george whitefield a contemporary to george john wesley he said it is better to wear out than to rust out you know what it means when something is rusted it's because they are not using it but if something is weared out it's because it has been overused it's better to be weared out than to rust do something find something to do exercise yourself keep trying and failing don't worry it is adding to your cv your story will inspire a generation thomas edison tried that bulb how many times a thousand times You know what I do idleness leads to number one idleness needs to leads to idolatry that's laziness it needs it leads to idolatry you begin to worship yourself it's all about you number two you can't help the poor when you are idle because you're not prospering you can't be of help to anybody and then number three you suffer hunger Proverbs 19 15 you can read that but God is delivering us from laziness in the name of Jesus yeah. and then finally wait patiently on the Lord wait patiently on the Lord Job 14 13 to 14 what did he say if a man dies will he live again he says all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes verse 14 all the days of my appointed time will I wait somebody will have to leave this place with the strength to wait on God again 
to wait on the promise that God has made to you to stay at it not to chicken out stop quitting just because it is yet to arrive too many believers chicken out we chicken out too much the Bible says in Luke 18 8 if the Son of Man comes will he find faith will he find faith we throw in the power too much God is scared of entrusting things to people because our faith is so shallow we can't bear to survive the process but tonight God is strengthening somebody under the sound of my voice the fortitude and the grace to endure and to stay in the midst of it not to run away until God comes true for you we're about to pray now when we started this ministry the first two three years I saw everything that will make me quit everything everything from betrayal to backstabbing to lack of venue to all kinds of things to being broke sometimes I have to trek from Damboaro to the university I trek halfway and use the last 50 naira to enter or I trek the full way and keep the 50 naira as offering we saw all kinds of things the third year as if it was not enough COVID came shut down no meeting imagine what you've been trying to build maybe God had to allow that to teach me that except the Lord builds the house they labor in vain that builds it in the midst of the COVID they called me my mother died what else again it's just to resign now no need to do ministry just find a secular job and do it because everything you want to preach that God has sent you to preach the opposite is in your life but I say we die here you hear me we die here and if next Sunday come back home but if next Sunday nobody's in this hall I will preach like this to the chairs because I've went through that process well enough at least five years to teach me that it is not of him that we let nor him that run it it is of God that showed mercy and as far as God's approval of me stands I don't care what people think about me for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation in mockery I will preach as far as God is still interested in me I will continue those days there's a sticker we used to hang on our houses say let my enemies live long and see what i will become may god answer that prayer over your life the only ones that will die is the witches say amen because witches eat people and if there is any of such around your life this night they go down to never rise but the other ones should remain see i will know that you truly trust god when you are leaving to come for new matter and they are fighting you don't go there where are you going to go back uh -huh. that's where the test is so you have an option either you follow god stand on your feet it's not over it's not finished it's not ending it's only the beginning when God is in there. All things are new. Ooh, ooh. All things are new. Ooh, ooh. It's not over. Sing it again. It's not over. It's not finished. It's not ending. It's only the beginning when God is in there. All things are new. Ooh, ooh. All things are new. I wish you understood what I just sang but so that somebody can hear it what we sang is it's not over it's not finished it has not ended whatever you are going through now the fact that you are still alive means that it is not yet over it's still half time something can still happen something can still happen 
something can still happen i want you to lift your voice and say lord i receive the grace to stay to remain in the midst of trials tribulations in the midst of sufferings i receive that grace please pray for one minute as we shut down tonight all things are I receive same power never to give up I may cry but I will stand and continue I may fall down but I will continue the race I must finish my course I must get to the end this suffering will not last forever for I know that my Redeemer lives and I am persuaded I am sure that I, He will stand at last on the earth I can't hear you pray. The grace never to give up. The grace never to give up. The grace never to give up. I may get tired, but I will stand up and continue. Troubles may rise against me, but in this I will be confident. War may rise against me, yet my heart will not fear. Shabarata kabarati kedu baruta sutoya. Shepere to kuso brutos. Seprete kedu shabarato kusete. Te barato kabos. Somebody pray. I receive same power. I receive the virtue of patience. I receive the virtue of endurance. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I will not give up on God. I will not give up on God. For I know that He that has called me is faithful. I will stay. I will keep fasting. I will keep praying. I will keep burning my night candle. I will keep studying. I will build capacity. I will keep working. I will not give up. I may have failed before, but I refuse to be called a failure. I may have failed before, but I refuse to be called a failure. Something inside of my spirit is rising for me to stand and do exploits for God. Please lift your hands. I want to speak over our lives. We don't have time. I pray in the name of Jesus that because of what you have heard tonight let the virtue of patience be built as a fortified wall inside of you let your patience level increase in the days ahead I declare that the grace never to give up the grace to continually refire the grace to keep at keep on the pace to stay at course until this suffering is over receive it in the name of Jesus even when others quit there will be something in you that will make you not to go back there will be something in you that will tell you you are nearer to the promised land that you first believed I declare that the voice of that thing inside of you is coming out tonight in the name of Jesus listen Jesus endured the pain to the cross. The grace to endure affliction. Receive it right now. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, when God is done with you, when that season of suffering, of trial is over, that God will make you a praise and a glory to your generation that God will glorify your life and even when you are long gone your story will inspire the next generation in the name of Jesus Christ that your latter end will be like he did for Job that God will restore you twice as much as you lost in the name of Jesus Christ and anyone that has gone through a season of suffering, trials, tribulations, pestilence, persecutions, afflictions 
tonight we declare that that season is rolled away Amen. we bring you into your season of glory Amen. in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. clap your hands for the king of kings Amen. hallelujah could you please remain standing let's give an opportunity for those who want to say yes to jesus tonight just remain standing and no movement anywhere please we want to give an opportunity for those who will be born again tonight you want to know jesus as your lord and your savior you want to walk with him you want to follow him on the journey of life and destiny you are tired of putting one leg with god and the other leg with the world i like you wherever you are to raise your right hand up and i'm going to pray with you raise your right hand up and i'm going to pray with you just raise it where i can see you whether you are inside or you are outside raise it where i can see you or perhaps because of the trials and the sufferings you've been through you gave up on god and you are it, it looks like you have returned back to your old life but right now you are convicted in your heart and you want to rededicate your life raise your hand and join them i want to pray for you keep your hands lifted high say after me lord jesus i return to you today i confess you as my lord and my savior thank you for saving me i declare that i will serve you forever no going back again in jesus name amen and amen please if you pray that prayer rush to the front i want to pray for you quickly god bless you clap as they are coming lord i give you my heart keep clapping they are coming i give you my if they are coming for out from outside please allow them make room for them to come for you oh lord every i think every moment i'm away lord have your way lord i give you my life lord i give you my life i give my soul I live for you oh Lord every breath that I take every moment I'm away Lord have your And those of you in the congregation stretch your hands please towards these ones in front please stretch your hands towards them and, and pray for them if you made that prayer you have you are streaming with us online on any of the platform let us know your name and your location so that we can reach out to you god bless you for making that honorable decision either you type it on the comment box or you send it to our public relations line let's be able to receive you and help you grow father i pray for these ones in front in the name of jesus i declare that the power of sin is broken over their life the power of death hell and the grave is broken over their life i arrest and i break the power of witchcraft over them i declare that their sins are forgiven by the authority of scripture that they will serve you now that they are born again all the days of their lives forward ever backward never in jesus precious name we pray amen god bless you please look at me just take your left somebody's waving a hand follow her to our counselors they will attend to you celebrate god for them as they depart god bless you hallelujah god bless you amen and amen are you blessed tonight can you be seated for just a few minutes before we leave now um, just before we share the grace I want to say a few things to us before we leave I'm sure we'll be out of here by seven uh, just buttressing on the announcement please for all sisters ladies women please we urge you uh, for our forthcoming sisters conference that you ensure to register registration on site is available if you are here in any of our live services the public relation desk is at the back you can register uh, 
and you can also do it online the link is available on all our social media platform please register make sure you register registration is free but compulsory and the lord will bless you as we prepare for that conference in jesus name and of course our worker service holds tomorrow at our new site by 4 30 so make sure you are there and the lord will bless you hopefully this saturday we will baptize our first set of um, <laughs> baptismal students amen hopefully this saturday so those of you who are, are in the baptismal class your teacher will get across to you as to when where and what time and god be praised in jesus name now two nights ago i was praying and um, uh, we, we had breakfast prayer initiative yesterday so automatically you will feel that when i'm praying the night before that meeting i should be praying for the meeting but uncontrollably i i saw that almost all through the prayer session i was praying for um, this issue with niger many of you who watch your news you are aware that there's been a coup in niger and niger the uh, republic of niger uh, which is the country that is the, at the northern part of Nigeria. Uh, there's been a coup there, a military coup. The president was ousted and um, is a military junta that is ruling now. And I know there's been mixed reactions about it. Some people are happy about it. Some are not happy about it, like the nations of the West, other African nations, and especially ECOWAS, which is uh, the block that all West African uh, nations are part of. And uh, we've seen meetings here and there. They've tried to bring diplomatic talks and all of that, but it is not working. And it looks like there's a threat of war. The ECOWAS are already determined to send troops to go into Niger and restore peace and restore the uh, democratically elected president and Niger too the military junta, junta they feel that they are ready for a fight and all of these things I'm saying are on the news so I, I didn't want to pray about it but you know the Bible says the spirit maketh intercession in us uh, with groanings that cannot not be altered so I found the spirit of intercession praying that through me on Friday night and I pray that God will restore peace and I'm saying it again that God will restore peace and that there will be no war there will be no intervention of ECOWAS forces as it were because based on what I saw it will be a serious disaster a serious a serious is something that has not happened in a long time but I don't know if this is a good news and even if it doesn't happen like this though i pray that it should happen but even if it doesn't happen like this at least um it's not god that lied it will be me who didn't see correctly but i'll tell you what i saw based on what i saw there will be no intervention of ECOWAS forces now <laughs> if you follow the news you you you'll almost laugh at what i'm just saying right it's true and I know this is a risk, but I will tell you what I saw. Based on what I saw, it will not hold. Somehow, by diplomacy or whatever means, there will be an agreement and peace will be restored. So I want us to pray. Because every prophecy is conditional, right? I want us to pray let's not go now and not pray about it and then eventually the opposite happens and we say god lied no let's intercede let's pray we must learn to war with prophecies when god speaks to you about your family speaks to you about your life that's when you need to increase the gear of prayer and partner with god to bring its fulfillment now we also need to pray for nigeria actually the shaking is too much and only god will restore peace and stability in our nation few days ago i had a vision a clear vision and i saw youths scampering up and down are the buses here 
okay don't worry you'll leave in the next two minutes i saw youths going up and down helter skelter i want us to pray against uprisings i saw this vision actually around thursday either thursday morning or not yet over You know the bible says in psalms 2 that he that sits in the heaven will laugh he allowed the wicked to make their plots and their manipulations sometimes god can allow himself to appear defeated just to show how more defeated the enemy is i rest my case there stand on your feet let's close your week is blessed in the name of jesus prosper in all that you do May the name of God be glorified in your life. Return work with multiple testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Make sure you greet at least one or two persons before you go. See you next week, same place and same time. Students, your bus is outside. Please, you can just make do with the means of transportation. God bless you.